spirituality. But the fact of the matter is, joy comes from that bliss of connectedness. That's our God spirit. That's that side of ourselves that really feels it. And you can feel it deep inside you. It's this amazing, wonderful feeling. And you know it when you get it. You don't get it from money. You get it from connection. Timing is everything. On September 29th, the United States stock market crashed, falling 777 points. Just in time for the fallout, a worldwide financial collapse, the movie Zeitgeist Addendum was released. The film, right on cue, explains the obvious, how a flawed financial system failed, and how it exploited the hard work, savings, and investments of all those that lost their money to this system. It simultaneously heaps the blame on free markets and religion while calling for a global shift in consciousness. This new paradigm is, of course, an old paradigm. It's an open call for socialism. One need look no further than Karl Marx to see parallels between zeitgeist addendums linking a distaste for free markets and religion. This should set off some rather loud alarm bells in the midst of patriotic and freedom-loving Americans. Most of those that have been actively observing the global elite have likewise understood that a pre-planned financial crash has been in the works for some time. Nicolas Sarkozy, president of the European Union, says that he wants a new global economic system to rise out of the ashes of this crash, which, in his own words, is expressed as a new world order. Zeitgeist Addendum seems to further the cause of this new world order neo-socialist paradigm, with American politicians and representatives ignoring the masses and passing off the debt of banks onto the general public, one can see the seeds of a new world socialism emerging right here in America. It's no coincidence that just as the new world order begins implementing Marxist thought in so-called free countries, Zeitgeist Addendum shows up to incite the masses in a global call for Marxism. If one should prefer to save two hours and skip watching Zeitgeist Addendum, its proposals are clearly spelled out in a relatively unknown book entitled The Externalization of the Hierarchy, written by Alice Bailey in 1934. Bailey claimed to have channeled an ascended master known as the Tibetan, or Dijua Kul, who supposedly penned the book through her. Bailey was also the founder of the Theosophical Lucifer Trust, later changed to Lucius Trust. Please note that the solution to the faltering global economy offered by Zeitgeist Addendum is the Venus Project. Venus, also known as the Morning Star, is synonymous with the term Lucifer. Some highlights from Bailey's The Externalization of the Hierarchy include the following. The problem of money will have to be faced. The problem of the distribution of wealth, whether natural or human, will need careful handling and a compromise reached between those nations which possess unlimited resources and those who have few or none. The problem of the varying forms of national government must be faced with courage and insight. The restoration, psychological, spiritual, and physical of mankind must constitute a primary responsibility. The sense of security must be put on a firm basis, the basis of a right relationship and not the basis of force. Men must feel secure because they are seeking to develop international goodwill. Bailey's externalization of the hierarchy also includes specifics as to the nature of the New World Order, and the following are just some of the links between Bailey's work and Zeitgeist Addendum. The New World Order will recognize that the produce of the world, the natural resources of the planet and its riches, belong to no one nation, but should be shared by all. There will be no nations under the category haves and others under the opposite category. A fair and properly organized distribution of wheat, the oil, and the mineral wealth of the world will be developed based upon the needs of each nation, upon its own internal resources, and the requirements of its people. All this will be worked out in relation to the whole. The new world order will be founded on the recognition that all men are equal in origin and goal but that all are at different stages of evolutionary development, that personal integrity, intelligence, vision, and experience, plus a marked goodwill, should indicate leadership. The domination of the proletariat over the aristocracy and the bourgeoisie, as in Russia, 
or the domination of an entrenched aristocracy over the proletariat and middle classes, as has been until lately the case in Great Britain, must disappear. The control of labor by capital, or the control of capital by labor, must also go. In the new world order, the governing body in any nation should be composed of those who work for the greatest good of the greatest number. The new world order will be founded on an active sense of responsibility. The rule will be all for one and one for all. This attitude among nations will have to be developed. It is not yet present. In the preparatory period for the new world order, there will be a steady and regulated disarmament. It will not be optional. No nation will be permitted to produce and organize any equipment for the destructive purposes or to infringe on the security of any other nation. One of the first tasks of any future peace conference will be to regulate this matter and gradually see to the disarming of the nations. The Venus Project, founded by Jacques Fresco, upon first glance it appears similar to one of the multitude of ill-fated hippie communes of the 1960s, but upon further study, it too is rooted in the same New World Order, occult, theosophical belief structure. Quoting from their website, One of the basic premises of the Venus Project is that we work towards having all of the Earth's resources as the common heritage of all the world's people. Anything less will simply result in a continuation of the same catalog of problems inherent in the present system. This is exactly what Bailey wrote in The Externalization of the Hierarchy. The links between the Venus Project and the essence of secret societies does however run even deeper than a call for communistic sharing of world resources. 33rd degree Masonic author Manly P. Hall said of America's link to the New Atlantis, the New Atlantis sets forth an ideal government of the earth. It foretells that day when in the midst of men there shall rise up a vast institution composed of the philosophic elect, an order of illumined men, band together for the purpose of investigating the laws of life and the mysteries of the universe. The age of boundaries is closing, and we are approaching a nobler era when nations shall be no more, when the lines of race and caste shall be wiped out, when the whole earth shall be under one order, one government, one administrative body. Manly P. Hall, alongside Rosicrucians like Francis Bacon, clearly defined the New World Order's drive to recreate Atlantis, and this theme clearly resurfaces in Fresco's architecture, specifically his circular city. The circular city image is one that is notably comparable to artistic versions of Atlantis based on Plato's descriptions of the sunken city. Another warning sign of Fresco's New World Order mentality is his desire to see technology steering mankind's destiny. Many patriots shiver at the idea of biometric identification, specifically the idea of implantable microchips that could be used to track and control humans in a way up until recently was only envisioned in the Bible. Fresco's vision for the future of humanity goes well beyond that of a simple microchip implant. He foresees humanity needing to merge with the machine or else risk de-evolution. He says, when biological technology becomes further advanced, human beings as we know them will become a modified species. If we as human beings fail to include the possibility of this development in our overall social evolution, we will witness the decline of our species. These are not mere coincidences. While seemingly revolutionary in thought, Fresco and his school of thought as espoused by the zeitgeist vision of rebellion against the system are part and parcel of the same social upheaval being called for, not by humanitarians, but by those who have been planning for the new world order from its earliest stages. It should also be noted that zeitgeist addendum begins and ends with speaking from Krishnamurti, who is raised from boyhood by the Theosophical Society to be a, quote, world teacher. And even though he broke from the group after declining to be their messiah, he maintained a friendly relationship with them by most accounts. This is not unlike others within the, quote, truth movement, such as Michael Tsarian, who openly admits he was, from an early age, taught by theosophists, if not raised by them. His connections to the group are quite interesting. See the links in the description section of this video for information and references to this and other things that we've discussed here. The peculiar affinity with the occult is nothing out of the ordinary with Zeitgeist. Part 1 of the initial Zeitgeist film was partially based on the work of a man that loved theosophy so much 
that he apparently named him.